The theory of plate tectonics is a very young scientific theory. It's only been used as the lead explanation for what causes the movement of plate tectonics for just over 50 years. There are still lots of questions about what causes plate tectonics to move, but the three leading mechanisms are convection cycles, slab pull, and ridge push. The theory of plate tectonics states that the crust, or the lithosphere, moves on what's known as the asthenosphere, or the mantle. The lithosphere is generally less dense than the asthenosphere, which explains why it floats on top of it. Plates actually move a very small amount every year. The movement of plates ranges from less than 1 cm to 15 cm per year, and nearly all seismic and volcanic activity happens at plate boundaries, or where plates meet. In fact, it's over 80% of all seismic and volcanic activity. Let's start by looking at convection cycles. We know that the asthenosphere or mantle is hot, but the deeper we go into the earth, the hotter it becomes. This gradient of temperatures in the mantle creates slow-moving convection cycles. These convection cycles bring hot material from deeper in the mantle up towards the surface. As this rising mantle reaches the bottom of the lithosphere, it diverges, or goes, two directions. This movement of the asthenosphere causes stresses on the lithosphere and cause it to split. As the lithosphere splits apart at what is known as a divergent boundary, it creates new crust. These divergent boundaries typically take place in the middle of oceans and happen underneath oceanic lithosphere. There is also continental lithosphere, and continental lithosphere is typically less dense than oceanic lithosphere. This will come into play when we talk about slab pole. Divergent boundaries and the new crust that's formed at them is also responsible for another mechanism of the theory of plate tectonics, which is ridge push. This proposed mechanism states that because there are ridges at divergent boundaries and they have a higher elevation than the surrounding lithosphere, there is a force of gravity that helps to pull the plates apart. And this pull from gravity continues to help the process of moving the plates and creating a divergent boundary. As the newly formed lithosphere continues to move away from the divergent boundary, it continues to cool. This makes it become more and more dense. Eventually, it becomes more dense than the asthenosphere below it, which would cause it to sink into the asthenosphere. And when one plate sinks beneath another, it's known as a subduction zone. This typically happens where continental crust, which is less dense than oceanic crust, meets oceanic crust. As the more dense oceanic crust, or lithosphere, sinks underneath the continental crust, it begins to sweat off fluids that are trapped inside it. As this subducting plate is heated, it sweats off fluids that are trapped inside of it. These fluids help to form new magma beneath the continental crust, which rises and often causes mountain ranges to form on the continental crust. For example, the Andes Mountains are formed in this way. These types of mountain ranges are typically volcanic as well, because of the rising magma that's inside of them. The sinking oceanic plate also helps to explain the third mechanism of the theory of plate tectonics, which is slab pull. As that more dense plate sinks into the asthenosphere, it continues to pull the rest of the plate along with it. Scientists are unsure how deep this subduction zone goes into the asthenosphere. Another key fact about the mechanisms that cause plate tectonics to move is the relative ages between oceanic and continental crust. Continental crust is usually much older than oceanic crust. The oldest continental crust on the Earth, which can be found in Australia, is about 4.3 billion years old, while the oldest oceanic crust is only about 180 million years old. This is an evidence of the theory of plate tectonics and of these mechanisms because it shows that oceanic crust is continually being recycled at convergent boundaries and divergent boundaries. 